Welcome to You Can Do It. In this episode, we're going to take this old damaged 12 gauge extension cord and we're going to make a power station that houses these four receptacles for a job site power station. So stay tuned and we'll show you how you can do it. All right, here's all of our supplies that we're going to build this power station with. We've got two four square deep boxes. They've got half inch and three quarter concentric knockouts on them. Um, we're going to need three wire nuts. We're going to use some heavy duty Ideal Twister Pro, uh, Proflex wire nuts. These things will accept five number 12 wires and these things twist up nice and tight. Um, we got two half inch industrial, uh, these are couplings, rigid couplings. We got two of those. Those are going to go in between the two boxes here that will connect them together. We got four half inch chase nipples that'll screw into our half inch rigid couplings. Um, we've got two industrial raised covers that are going to um, bolt our, our receptacles to it. And that's what's going to hold the receptacles nice and tight to the box. And then we've got, this is a, uh, this is a, a cord relief. It actually holds the cord in place and it will not pull the cord out of the box. It's got a rubber grommet in there and this thing's industrial um, and that'll do the job as far as keeping the receptacle from, or the actual cord from pulling out of the box if somebody was to yank it. So now the tools that we've got, we got two pairs of channel locks. We've got a screwdriver, a flathead, it's a multi-tool. It'll do uh, Phillips and a flathead. We've got a pair of strippers, we've got a box cutter, we have a pair of needle nose pliers, and some side cutters. And as far as our material goes, we've got our damaged extension cord that most people would just throw away. And we've got some 12 gauge wire here. We've got some green. I've cut these to about Oh, these are about eight inches long. They're pigtails. I've already stripped the ends off. And we've got some eight inch black pigtail wire here, number 12. And this is number 12 white. Uh, and then also I've got some longer ones that I made. These are 12 inches long. This is our ground wire, green, in case you didn't know that. And then this is white for the neutral. These are also 12 inches and two set or, or a pair here of black number 12. These are going to come from the farthest box. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to cut our extension cord, cut off this damaged part and insert it into our connector. Let's get that out of here. We've got the connector here. So we're going to unscrew it and pull all the parts apart here. We got the rubber piece. Just kind of keep them in order so you know the way they go on. So you're just going to take this guy, the back part, slide that on. And you'll slide this guy on next. And then this guy goes in there like that. So we're going to slide him on. This one might be a little bit harder because it's rubber. So actually, we're going to go ahead and strip the wires back here. You're going to need at least about 8 inches of wire for makeup inside the box. Now, I'm using a box cutter to, to cut the outer jacket of the extension cord. You don't want to cut too deep because you'll damage your wire. You might hit one of the hot, the hot wire, the neutral, and expose the jacket. So I'm going to carefully cut the outer jacket off the wire here. And then you'll get this nylon material here and cut that back. Make sure you don't cut a wire. Now you should be able to slide this on fairly easy. Actually, I'm putting it on wrong. You want the jacket 
of the of the cord to probably pull through about at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch. Then you'll notice that there's four little holes in there for this to line up to. So that'll seat in there nice and tight. And you'll screw this down. So I've got this started and I'm gonna screw this guy onto the other part of the fitting there. And I've got it hand tight, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a few turns here with the channel locks to make it nice and snug. The outer jacket of this extension cord was rather thick, so it was a little bit tight trying to get the two pieces to connect. That'll do it. That's nice and tight. This thing is not pulling out of that at all. So there's a half inch lock nut here. We're gonna loosen that up and pull that off. And then you'll notice there's a little rubber O-ring right there. Now these boxes that I'm using, these aren't weather type boxes that you would use out in the rain. Um, if you're wanting a weather tight setup, you'll want to go with a weather tight box, which would be like a aluminum bell box. But this is going to be used like inside of a house during a rough end or something. So I've got my box here and you'll notice that there's several different options here on your knockouts. You don't want to do this half inch knockout here because you'll notice that there's there's an outer ring right here and that's for three quarter. Well, there's two little spot welds and if you break this loose, this will become very, um, well, it's not gonna be structurally sound. That'll eventually break away and your whole extension cord, the fitting will just pop right out. So we're gonna go with this half inch right here. We're gonna take our needle nose pliers and knock that out. We're going to insert the cord into the box. Take your lock nut and slide it over the wire. And tighten it down. Just be careful not to cross thread the lock nut. It should go on nice and tight. And once you get it on tight, go ahead and take your channel locks and tighten it down. It should bite down on the other side to where you don't have to use another pair of channel locks. But if so, just get your other channel locks and set them up inside there. All right, so we got that done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to knock out this hole and this one here, even though it has a three quarter concentric knockout on it, and we're gonna knock out the other one on the other side. So these two here, we're gonna take out, and these two on this outer side, not the centers. We're gonna leave the, that, those two holes alone. take the two rigid half inch couplings we're going to put one here and take your half inch chase nipple and screw it into the, the half inch rigid nipple and do the same on the other one Now you're probably asking, why am I using two? I'm using two because if I only had one on one end here, this box eventually would get loose and do that. So I'm dropping two on it for stability to make this thing nice and strong. And it'll be nice and sound, it'll be, it'll be strong. I've made several of these over the years and they last a long time. 
when they get thrown around on a job site. Take your channel off and tighten it up nice and tight. So now we're going to take this half inch chase nipple and screw that one down. Leave it loose so you can get the other one on. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna install a ground screw. I forgot to mention that you're gonna need one ground screw and it's gonna go in the box and it there's a little hole right here. It's got kind of a mounded piece inside the box. It's raised. That's to accept a ground screw. So I'm gonna take the ground screw and I've pulled out my flathead uh, multi-tool here and I'm gonna stick that in there. And just, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down, I'm just gonna get it started. Because I'm gonna take one of these three ground wires right here, the longer one. I'm gonna take my wire strippers here, right on the end there's a kind of an open hole right there. You take your wire stripper and, and grip it nice and tight and just put a hook on it, just like that. You're gonna put a hook on it and then stick it around your ground screw. You can kind of bend the wire up, it's solid. Put it around the ground screw. Take your wire cutters and kind of squeeze the wire around the screw so it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna just tighten this down. We're gonna, what we wanna do is we just wanna really make sure the box is grounded nice and nice and solid there. So that's gonna be our ground pigtail. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install these number 12 pigtail wires that we cut on our devices here. But the first thing we're gonna do is they've got these ears on here. So if you were to mount this traditionally into a receptacle box, these ears rest against the sheetrock. Well, we have to cut these off. There's a line right here because this industrial raised cover, it won't, the receptacle isn't gonna go flush to the actual plate unless you remove those. Now, you can do one of two things. You can just take your needle nose and bend these guys back and forth, or you can take side cutters and just cut these off. It's kind of thick, so might take a little effort here. Or you can use linemans. Okay, so we got all the ears off, the receptacles, now we're going to take out these machine screws because we're not going to use those. The industrial plates over here, they come with their own hardware here. So we're going to use what they give us. The screws are a lot shorter, so they don't actually uh, accidentally cut the wire when you're screwing them in. So we're just going to get rid of these. You can save them if you want. Put them in your man cave, junk drawer, or whatever you got in your garage. Um, okay, so we got those out. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the pigtails. Um, for the sake of time, I already pre-wired these. Um, like I said, I had some that were longer. These are the, the 10 to 12 inch pigtail wires. Those are already installed, these two devices, and I've got this device, this receptacle here. And so I'm gonna show you how to install this one. Um, these are commercial receptacles. They're 20 amp rated, our cord, is 12 gauge it's rated for 20 amps so we're not using 14 gauge wire so when you're out on the job site if you plug this cord into a 20 amp circuit maybe a, a garage circuit or a laundry circuit or you know if you're doing a remodel in the kitchen you plug it into the kitchen countertop that'll be a 20 amp circuit by code it should be um, it'll support uh, two saws um, it'll support all your charging you can plug quite a bit of stuff into this receptacle um, charging system here so we're gonna go ahead and install our wires I've got them stripped back about a half inch it's about all you need if you strip back any more than that the wire will be exposed in the back um, of the receptacle and I just don't recommend that so these guys here, you don't have to wrap the wire around the screw, you just insert it in the hole. So we're gonna put it in the hole there. It's, if you use your flat blade screwdriver, you can actually torque it down 
a lot better than the Phillips. It won't really strip out on you. Just be careful you don't slip and run the screwdriver into your hand. I've done that before. Doesn't feel good. All right, so we got the white, white screw, white wire. So we got our hot wire here, which is the black. That's gonna land on the gold. So we put that on the gold screw there. We're gonna tighten that down. Now the other two screws, we're gonna go ahead and just snug those up. Just so it's not rattling around both sides here. Now we're gonna take the ground wire and we're gonna do like we did earlier on that other pigtail. We're gonna take it and we're gonna just put a hook on it here. A hook, we're gonna take it and stick it around this ground screw here and then close the loop around the ground so it doesn't come off. See that, this thing, it won't come off. So now we're just gonna tighten this down. So now we're ready to install these longer pigtails into our, our box here. So we're gonna go ahead and install them. Now you can turn these different ways if you'd like. You could have one go this way and one go that way if you're plugging in different devices. Um, you can do that. It's up to you. It's your preference. They don't have to all go the same direction. I'm going to use this other one here. This other rigid coupling and run the wires through that side. They want to get hung up sometimes. All right. So those guys are initially set just like that. So what's going to end up happening is we're going to take these, the hardware they give us, and we're going to run the hardware through the top holes. There's two screws and two nuts per receptacle. And so it's a little tricky getting the nut on, but we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to do that. Um, actually, it's, it's good to just kind of hold it like this and do it from this backside. So let me get the bag, open up our hardware. So we'll just start with one at a time here. Push the... It's a, the screw goes in the front there and you can, if you get it started on the back or you just hold it there, you take your flathead just hold your finger on the back of the, of the, the nut and it should stay put. Okay, so we've finished this box off. We got the plate mounted down. There's two Phillips screws here, which are in the box here. On the, on the next box, we're gonna do these screws you'll take out. You can either use your drill or you can use your flat screwdriver. Just take those screws out, set them aside. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our devices here with the pigtails on them, and we're gonna gather up each set of wires here, your grounds, your hot wires, which are the black wires, and just kind of group them all together into one area here. And so ideally you want to have all your wires together and you don't want them sticking, you don't want out one sticking out further than the other. You want them all to be nice and flush with one another. And I've got these stripped back. These, however, I've stripped back about an inch. I told you earlier, those would, the ones that you go put into the device, that would be a half inch. 
This is more like an inch, maybe an inch and an eighth. So I've got all these wires here nice and flush with one another because you don't want a wire to escape and pop out of the wire nut. So I forgot to introduce a set of pliers here. These are linemen's. You can use linemen's, but I would recommend you just take the wires and just kind of give them a twist with a pair of linemen, especially solid wire. So these wires here, they're all pretty nice and tight before you install the wire nut. So I got the wire nut here. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, and I'm just going to start twisting until it gets really tight here. You'll start to see the wires twisting together like licorice on the back side of the wire nut. That's about how tight you want to get it. If you're using inexpensive wire nuts, if you over tighten it, the actual metal inside the plastic wire nut will separate from the plastic. And if you feel that thing come loose, then you've got problems. You need to pull that off and get yourself a different wire nut or, or get a different brand. All right, so we're gonna move on to the black wires here. Make sure all your wires are flush. And go ahead and give it a nice twist here. And whatever wires are sticking out, you can trim them, trim them back. You don't wanna use the wire nut to do what I'm doing right here. Alright, so they're all nice and flush. Go ahead and put your wire nut on. Alright, now we're working our way over to the ground wires. So since I've got these wires, I'm just going to go ahead and left one wire out purposely here. I'm just going to get these twisted since these are solid and the last wire is uh, stranded. I'm just going to kind of wrap it around that by hand and cut these flush. Had a couple sticking out. Go ahead and put the wire net on. So we're going to go ahead and stuff these wires in nice and easy here. Not fold them down into the box. Get them ready for the plate to go on. I've turned them opposite of one another here. Now, if you have industrial rays or if you have commercial receptacles where your side post here sticks out a ways, it's good to take some electrical tape and wrap it around the receptacle. Just they call it courtesy tape. It just it keeps you from shorting something out or it just makes it a nice install. All right, so we're going to take our other industrial raised cover. Go ahead and put the cover on here and repeat the other process of placing the nut on the back of the screw and tightening it down. All right, so we got our industrial raised cover mounted to our receptacles, and we're gonna go ahead and install the industrial raised cover to the four square box. I'm gonna use a drill. These screws, they're, they're actually pretty nice. They're tapered at the end to prevent cross-threading. So you just put that there on your drill, bring it down to the box, kind of line it up, and away you go. We'll get the other one in there.
All right. So we're ready to plug this thing in and test it and see if all of our receptacles are wired correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the cord. I've got a GFI'd cord here. I'm gonna plug it in. It's now hot. Now I'm gonna plug in a plug tester. This is a Klein plug tester. It's got a digital readout on it and it'll tell us if it's wired correctly in our voltage. So it's reading 122 volts and it says correct wiring. So let's go to our next one here. 122 volts, correct. Next. That one is also reading the same, it's correct. And we'll go ahead and flip her around here. Plug it into the last one. And there you go. It's also correct. All right, so there you have it, folks. That's a real heavy duty power station for you for a job site, or you could take this with you um, camping if you, in your motorhome, or if you need to plug in a bunch of lights. This is a really cool setup here. I'll leave a description and a link with all the parts for you to uh, buy these parts at Home Depot or Lowe's and make it real easy for you. So thank you for watching. You can do it and stay tuned for our next video.